Mark, those individuals that are aware of selenium and its role in nutrition um, are very well aware of the original trial, the Nutritional Prevention of Cancer trial. It was a cancer prevention trial that looked at the role of selenium supplementation in the prevention of cancer. We often refer to it as the Larry Clark and Jerry Combs trial, the Clark and Combs trial. Uh, they were both at Cornell University at that time when the trial began in 1983. The trial ran, as you know, for a good long while, unpublished in, uh, or unblinded in 1994 and then published in the Journal of American Medical Association in 1996. And uh, the results of that showing that a 50 to 63 percent reduction in colon, lung, and prostate cancer. You have a long history with that. Uh, you studied under Dr. Combs. Uh, at Cornell and did your PhD thesis with him. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Dr. Gerald G.F. Combs, Jr. is a world-renowned, world-renowned, world renowned. World renowned yeah. selenium scientist. Yeah. And I studied with him at, at Cornell University. He was my PhD advisor. And from my research that I did with him at the cellular level of selenium biochemistry, from that work that I did, led to three scientific journal articles in addition to my, to my dissertation. And those journal articles are actually published on our website where you can go to the links on our website okay. under, our we under the research section, and one can go to the full articles. What was the focus links. of your research? Well, basically, using laboratory animals, studies were conducted to determine the bio biochemical role of selenium in the pancreas. Okay. And the following results were obtained. Basically, the glutathione peroxidase activities that convert the hydrogen peroxide to water mm -hmm. to help detoxify all that free radical production at the cellular level. When we had those laboratory animals, the selenium depleted group, we had one group with selenium and the other one selenium depleted, okay. where they had no selenium in their diets. So they would be the control, the control group? The okay. control group. And when we compare that control group to the selenium supplemented group, within five days after selenium was taken out of their diet, we could see a significant reduction of glutathione peroxidase activity within five, five days, days in, the pla in the blood plasma levels. Five days. So it's quite a rapid effect. Yeah, right. okay. And then shortly thereafter that we saw those low glutathione peroxidase levels mm -hmm. in the blood plasma within those five days. Shortly after that, using electron microscopy, we could see some cellular damage at the cellular level. In the pancreas? In the pancreatic, in the pancreatic cells. We in actually went down to the cells. cellular level. We went to yeah. the exocrine pancreas at the cellular level, and we could see some, some cellular damage shortly after those five days of... Uh, Selenium the low glutathione so you know what a healthy activity. cell looks like, and then in a, in a selenium deficient cell, you, you can see the effects of that, that deficiency of selenium. That's correct. And also looking at the electron microscopy of these damaged cells, we noted that the mitochondrial part of those cells, the membranes, which is where the free radicals usually have the most rapid effect in terms of damage in the cells, we could see at the, under electron microscopy we could see d damage within a, f within a week or two at those mitochondrial, mi mitochondrial membranes, which is really is a direct result of free radical degradation of those cellular membranes. Okay. So you were looking at specifically pancreatic cells, but can we assume that some of that same kind of damage happens throughout our body in, at all cellular levels? It would, it would actually. But the reason why we use the pancreatic cells because the lab animal we were using, it was the first tissue right. that had an effect so it was a good lab model okay. to work with because we could see, start seeing within a week or two, cellular damage in the pancreatic cell. So the lab animal we were using was a good model to use the pancreatic okay. tissue for that reason. What were some of the conclusions you drew from your work and your studies? Well, basically the conclusions were that selenium is required in the diet. If you don't have selenium in the diet, you start seeing lower levels of glutathione peroxidase activity rather quickly. Which in is our case, natural antioxidant. That's that correct. our body has. That's correct. The first line of defense of the mm -hmm. antioxidants okay. by converting that hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, to water, H2O, okay. in that detoxification system. So the conclusions were within a few days you'd start seeing low levels of blood plasma, glutathione peroxidase activity, and within a few days after that we would start seeing free radical damage yeah. at the cellular level. And the selenium supplemented group we, didn't, we saw very high levels of glutathione peroxidase activity, and it maintained the integrity of all the cell, cells at, in the pancreas, so there was no cell damage okay. with the selenium supplemented group. 
So much of the work that you've done and, and work that Dr. Combs have done have really laid the groundwork for much of the research that we're seeing now related to selenium and selenium supplementation. That's, that's correct. Really, I think much of the research you're seeing now, a lot of the original work and what we did with Dr. Combs was at the cellular level, and a lot of the work now you see is more at the clinical trial right. level. And a lot of ongoing work going on to, to really look at the, the, the positive effects of selenium supplementation. Yeah, there's over a dozen trials ongoing today, clinical yeah. trials with selenium supplementation yes. for, for humans. Okay, very good.